Hello everyone, Mr. Love here, coming to you from outside the diesel shop. Today we're just going to be doing some basic operation of this Bobcat E32 mini excavator here. We'll walk through the pre-trip operation, what you should be checking each day before you head out, and just some general little controls and stuff like that. You should always refer to the owner's manual before you go out and run any of this equipment. Get familiar with all the controls and operation, daily checks, daily grease points, all that stuff, before you go out and actually use it for the day. But this will give you a general idea of getting familiar with the controls and stuff like that. So let's get started. Okay, just a couple of quick checks we want to do before we start doing anything. First, we'll check the engine oil in this. So this one's in the back compartment here. We'll raise up the back compartment. It's a little dirty in there. This one's just been out running. We'll reach in, pull out our oil dipstick, have a nice clean rag. We'll wipe down our dipstick. We'll insert it back in. And we want to make sure that our oil is on the full mark there. So we have two marks. We have the add mark. We have the full mark. We want the oil pretty close to the full mark on there. Also, we'll check the coolant level while we're in here. So this one has a little expansion tank right here. So we just want to make sure that it's above the cold full fill line right there. So we're good right there. We also want to just give everything a general little check. We'll check our little belts. We've got a little baby serpentine belt in there that runs the alternator, the fan. Um, check our exhaust, make sure we don't have any exhaust leaks. Check just our fuel lines, our electrical wiring and stuff like that. Just make sure nothing's rubbing. So generally everything looks good. looks pretty dirty inside there, but for the most part, it looks pretty decent. We do have a little restriction indicator for our air cleaner there. That's still in the range, so we're still good there. Okay, now we're going to pop open this side cupboard right here. And this side cupboard here, we'll be able to see our radiator a little bit better. Plus, we'll be able to check our hydraulic fluid. So we just do this little bungee cord here to get that out of the way. Then this will just raise right up here and kind of lock open for us. Okay, so we got this locked open now. You can see now we can see our radiator and our cooler and stuff there pretty good. Just you know, check for general debris inside there, especially plastic bags and stuff like that. If you're working on a site with a lot of garbage and stuff like that blowing around they like to stick you know to the radiators okay we'll check our hydraulic fluid level over here so we're in the green range right here we have a little sight glass you can pull the cap off um, and check down in there or put a stick in there if you need to if our sight glass gets too dirty this is just a little tube you can see it's half stained but we can still see our level in there pretty good if we do pull the cap off for any reason make sure we clean up around it first you can see that you know, dirt and debris really like to settle down inside here so while we have this open, we'll just check our other stuff here and check our hydraulic lines, make sure we don't see any leaks. We'll check our battery down inside here, just make sure the wires aren't rubbing, make sure it's securely mounted. We don't want to have our mounts or anything off our battery, otherwise we'll be shaking around and you know taking the life out of our battery. Okay, everything looks good under there. We'll close this back up. Make sure this is latched down good, otherwise sometimes it pops open on you. Well, you're operating. Okay, we do have our fuel um, fill over on this side over here. Make sure you fill it up each day. We have a fuel gauge up on the dash up there that we'll check once we fire it up. Um, this here, you need the key to open it up. Otherwise, it just sits there and spins. So if it sits there and spins and you can't open it, you got to pull the key out and put it in there and actually take the cap off of there. Um, if you pull the cap off right now, you wouldn't be able to see down in there anyway, so that's only got to worry about that if you're actually going to fill it. Okay, so before we fire up our machine, we're going to do a good circle of safety, and we're going to inspect everything else on it while we kind of walk around. So what I like to do is I approach the a piece of equipment here, look around it, look underneath it, look for, you know, cats, children, other small animals, other debris you might hit. We have some overhead power lines and stuff right here, you know, just check your surroundings, look for added dangers or anything like that. Just do a nice little circle of safety around the machine and just check for everything. So check our tracks, make sure they look in good shape. It's kind of hard to, you know, check the tension on these here. Just because there's so many little idlers and they're so, you know, contracted already. We'll check all our little lines and stuff as we're going, our cylinders. Just make sure everything's in good shape. Give it a general little thing. If you're using this quite a bit, make sure you do your daily greasing. 
around here we usually only have to grease them once a week or so just because you know we only run them you know an hour or two a day okay so everything looks good okay so we'll fire it up and show you some basic controls here okay before we get started running any equipment we always want to make sure we have on our proper personal protective equipment so when we're running equipment we want to have on a high-vis vest we want to have on good work boots definitely have on pants I like to have on um, shirts I can turn into long sleeve shirts if I need to so I usually just wear a work shirt where I can roll up the sleeves or roll them down as need be and safety glasses over our eyes and a ANSI certified hard hat on our head at all times. I usually still wear my hat with my hard hat there just to keep some of the sweat from dripping down my face a little bit better but you can do head on head off just as long as the hard hat securely mounted on your head and it's not going to fly off as you're you know running equipment or anything like that okay so let's get started okay whenever we get up on our piece of equipment make sure we use three points of contact excavators can be a little tricky sometimes because it depends where you set it down is where you have the best steps on it because the whole body of this swings around you know compared to the tracks so um, try to position it where you can get on and off easy each time so I'm going to go up the side right here, but just make sure you got three points of contact, two hands, one feet, or two feet, one hand. Got grab bars, use those getting up in there. Kind of get up in here, just plop down in the seat. Okay, first thing I always do is throw on my seatbelt. So we'll inspect our seatbelt too, pull it out, make sure there's no frays, make sure it latches in good. Okay, we're good to go there. Okay, so we take out our key here, and we have a little key switch down over here. We'll put our key in, and we'll just turn it to accessory for a second here. Okay, we got it on to accessory. Now we can see our fuel gauge on here. So we got a little above quarter tank in here, so it'll be good enough for what we're doing. But we would definitely want to fill that up before it went out and operated. Okay, everything looks good. Our self-check went through. If it was a little colder, it would say wait to start here, or it would say glow plugs and have a countdown. We would wait for that countdown to go off before we fired it up. Okay. Gonna fire it up now. Okay, we got it fired up, we got it running. There's a little turn knob over here for the throttle. So we can turn that turn knob and make it rev up more, or slow down more. Okay, so before we start to operate, you'll see this little red little lever right here. We push that red lever down and that brings our other armrest and our other control down for us. Okay, so now we can sit up in here pretty nice and comfy here. You can see we have two main joysticks that we'll be running all the time. We have some secondary joysticks here that we use for moving. We got another joystick over here that we use for raising and lowering our push blade that's on the front of this that we'll see here in a minute. Okay. Okay, so as I run through my controls here, so... Over on my right joystick over here, this is going to do my bucket up and down, so it's going to raise and lower my whole boom here. So if I pull back on the joystick right there, it's going to raise my boom up. I'm going to push it forward, it's going to lower my boom down for me. If I go left with this, it's going to curl my bucket. If I go right with it, it's going to uncurl my bucket. We'll see these actual controls here in a second. I just wanted to show you what these actually do first. Okay, then our other joystick here, our left-hand joystick. This is what we're going to use to swing left, swing right, and uh, do some more digging with our joystick. It's going to run the second part of our boom there, the you know, curl the bucket. We'll see that in a second here. So up and down for that, up to extend it out further towards you to bring it back further, push it to the left to swing left, push it to the right to swing right. Okay. Also this um, excavator right here has a little thumb on the bucket here. You'll see what I mean by that in a second, but the controls for that here to run the thumb part, you gotta hit the little auxiliary hydraulic switch over here on the side. You hit the auxiliary switch, and now you could use the little toggle that's on this right here joystick to open and close our thumb. We'll see the whole operation here in just a second. Okay, I'll set this back down on the ground here. Okay, so our last controls that we normally have to worry about 
is our forward and reverse. So we have these two levers right here in front of us. So we would get our excavator swung around to a safe position where we can go forward or backwards. Either direction we can have it facing. And then we can just run uh, these controls here. So push them both forward to go forward. Push them both back to go backwards. It's going to beep in both directions for you. So it doesn't... It's not really a backup beeper, it's just a moving beeper. So if you hear that beeper, that just means you're moving. You can either forward or reverse. Remember, it's an excavator, so you can face either direction here. Okay? So if we wanted to turn, we would do the left-hand one or the right-hand one in either direction, just to get us to turn around here. With our excavators, we always want to do little movements. The tracks usually aren't the best on excavators. They're just there to move us forward and back. They're not they're really made to push or anything like a bulldozer. So our tracks like to come off a lot more than they do on bulldozers. So be aware of that. Okay? So that's our basic controls there. When we're done operating, we would just turn our throttle down. We would shut our vehicle off here, our piece of equipment off here. We would just pull up on our red knob, get that up out of the way. Take off our seatbelt, and then just do our three points of contact to get back down. Okay, so let's do some actual um, operating of this where you can see it a little bit better. Okay, I'm back up in the seat up here. You can see my basic functions here now. So I got my right hand joystick, I can pull back on my right hand joystick, and it's going to bring my boom up for me. My left hand joystick, if I push that forward now, you see it'll lengthen my other part of my boom out for me. If I pull it back, my left hand joystick back, it brings that part of the boom in towards the machine. My right hand, if I go to the right with it, it takes my bucket out. If I go to the left with it, it's going to bring my bucket back in for me. So bucket out to the right, bucket in to the left. Right joystick down brings the main boom down. Right joystick back brings the main boom back up. Left joystick, if I wanted to swing right, I would go to the right with it. If I wanted to swing left, I would go to the left with it. I could go all the way around if I wanted to. Okay, so like I said a minute ago, this does have a thumb on it. If I wanted to run the thumb that's on the bucket, I'd hit my auxiliary, turn that on, and then with my toggle on my right-hand joystick, I can open and close the thumb that's on the bucket there. So that's handy if I wanted to pick up a log or something like that. I could scoop it up with the bucket, and then I could grab right a hold of it with my little thumb that's on there, on the bucket. So Just be aware how to use that, even if you don't use it. A lot of times it'll settle down overnight and you'll have to fire it up and bring it up out of the way. Okay, so our last function is just our forward and reverse for general stuff. So I'll just move, spin this around to a safe little thing here. You can see our blade that's on the front for filling in our ditch is down on the ground right now. That's that other joystick here. So I just pull back on it to raise my little blade up. I push it down forward to lower it down. Okay, so with my blade up in there, now I can safely move forward and reverse. So I can do it with my two joysticks. I usually like to use the joysticks on this. There's also pedals that actually operate the same thing. So if I wanted to sit here, I could actually run it with my hands, or with my feet, not my hands. So if I wanted to, you know, still run my controls while I was moving back and forth, I could. I got kind of bigger feet that kind of don't like these small little mini excavators or bobcats or anything like that. So I usually like to use hand controls whenever I can. So hand controls here, we talked about, I push them both forward, I go forward. If I push them both backwards, I go backwards. Okay, so forward on here is basically where our blade is. But remember, we could be facing the other direction and do the same exact thing. So just be aware that as you're going, if I push forward right now, you know, it'd be really my backwards right now. So just be aware of which way you're facing on here. The blade is on the front of the machine. 
Okay, so I'm facing forward. I can go forward. If I wanted to turn left, I would let go of the left one and let the right side drive a little bit more. If I wanted to turn right, I would just do the opposite. I'd push the left one forward, let the left one drive, and let the right one kind of walk down and kind of skid a little bit. So just you know, small movements as you're going back and forth. Whenever we're done for the day, make sure our bucket and everything's all the way down on the ground, nice and secured. I like to lower the thumb part down too. Our, make sure our blade's lowered down. Make sure our thumb's lowered into the bucket. Make sure we're in a nice little safe spot to shut it down for the day. So to shut down, again, we just shut off the key. Raise up on our red knob here that'll lift our armrest out of the way, undo our seatbelt, and we can get off the piece of equipment. So, again, three points of contact getting done. You step right on the track on these. That's all there is for basic operation of our mini excavator here. So, again, it was a Bobcat E32. Every machine's going to be a little bit different, even different models of Bobcats have different controls and stuff. So, like I said, always refer to the owner's manual, get studied up on that before you run any piece of equipment. Okay, have a great day and give her diesel.